Today we're going to look at domain and intercepts of rational functions. We've done domain and intercepts of all kinds of other functions, so the general concept is still the same. But before we do that, we're going to revisit the slant asymptotes a little bit, because I want to tell you a little bit more about them that I didn't want to cram it all in yesterday. Um, so first of all, slant asymptotes could also be called what? What's another word for the slant part of that? Oblique. Could be oblique. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is factor this. So I'll have f of x equals, the denominator is going to stay x plus 2, and then um, this is going to be x and x, minus 1 and minus 3. All right, so some of the things that we found yesterday, it's a little reminder here. We looked for point discontinuity, which are the holes. Do I have any? No, because there's nothing to reduce, so there is none. We also looked for vertical asymptotes. Are there any? Yes. Where? X equals negative 2. Good. What about horizontal asymptotes? Remember to look at that. We look to see if it's top heavy, bottom heavy, or tied in degree. What is this one? Top heavy, and top heavy means we have none. But if it is top heavy by just one degree, then we could possibly have a slant asymptote, and or we would have a slant asymptote. So it's one more. So that's I'm going to have a slant asymptote. So we're going to go figure out where that is. So I'm going to take this. So not I needed this version. This version helps me find a whole lot of other things. But to actually divide, I want the multiplied version. So Come over here. I can use synthetic division, so I'll use that. So I'll have a negative 2 on the outside. Then I'll have a 1, a negative 4, and a 3. So I bring down my 1, gives me a negative 2, negative 6, positive 12, positive 15. Okay, so when you straight up divide like we did, this is the result here. We would have that f of x equals x minus 6 plus 15 over x plus 2, right? That's like your actual division. But when I go to find the slant asymptotes here, I don't care about the remainder, so my slant asymptote is just y equals x minus 6, right? We're going to talk about what the remainder actually tells us. So first of all, here's my function. I have this vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, there is no horizontal asymptote because you'll never have a horizontal and a slant at the same time because they exist for different reasons and it can't be the same thing. Um, so then here's this slant asymptote. The equation of this line is y equals um, x minus 6. So here, if I look just at the remainder, so my remainder was 15 over x plus 2. So if you notice, since this, is, since this is an asymptote, your function is getting closer and closer and closer to that asymptote. So it's farther away here, it gets closer and closer and closer, right? This right here, what the remainder actually gives us, this is the distance the function is from the slant asymptote. Oh, spell. Okay, so that's what it is. It's the distance the function is from the slant asymptote. So if we look at, so each one of these boxes, it, it counts by fours. So right here, when x is four, it's this far away. Right here, when x is eight, it's this far away. When x is 12, it's this far away. See, I get smaller and smaller and smaller. So when x is 4, if I substitute that in there, I would have 15 over 8, which is going to give me, oh, no. It's 15 over 6. Good Lord. I was like, wait, that doesn't reduce. It would give me 15 over 6 when I add correctly, and that would be 5 halves. So it's 2 and a half units away right here. When x is 8, I'd have 15 over 10. That'll give me 3 halves. So now it's 1 and a half units away. When it's 12, I'd have 15 over 
14, and it's even closer. And the bigger and bigger and bigger x gets, the smaller and smaller and smaller that distance gets. Does that make sense? OK, so this is just kind of an FYI. I'm not going to test you over that. I'm not going to make you find these things. I just wanted you to know that, yeah, we ignore the remainder, but it does tell us something. OK, it's the distance it is away, and that changes, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So just kind of a, you know, so it's, it's not like we ignore it, and it means absolutely nothing. It's just not the equation of the line itself. OK, we good? Awesome. All right, so let's look at what we're actually finding today. So domain, you know what domain is. We know how to find it pretty easily, but the order in which you do things for rationals is very important. So you have to find the domain first. It's the first step, and it happens before reducing. Okay, so if you can reduce where you're going to have a hole in the graph, you have to find the domain first. Otherwise, your domain is not correct. All right, so then we know how to find zeros, but we do this after reducing, which means after finding point discontinuity. If you have it, you can't always reduce, but you have to look for it first. So the zeros of the rational, because remember, we'll have equations <coughs> in the numerator and denominator. Um, the zeros of the function itself are the zeros of the numerator. What do the zeros of the denominator give you? The vertical asymptotes, exactly. Then y-intercepts, you've been finding y-intercepts forever. Okay, you also do this after reducing, or it's not going to work out right. After reducing, which means after finding the point discontinuity, because that's the only thing you're going to reduce for. And to find the y-intercept, you do it the exact same way you've been finding y-intercepts your entire life, which is you substitute 0 in for x and solve for y. That's the same thing as finding f of 0. Okay. So again, we've been doing this for different functions all year, and it wasn't new when you came to me, so we just got to make sure we do it right with rationals, and we will be good to go. All right, any questions at this point? Alrighty, then let's find the domain. So the domain is found before reducing, but you still have to factor. So I'm going to factor this, and I'm going to have x minus 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. Okay, not crossing anything out yet. What is happening on my graph when x equals 2? Positive 2. It is a discontinuity when x equals a positive 2. Because isn't that what I could cancel out here? Which means it's a what? A hole. So when x equals a positive 2, there's a hole in my graph. Which means there's no x there, right? So that affects my domain. It is a discontinuity. What happens on my graph at x equals negative 2? vertical asymptote. Okay, so that also affects, and that gives me discontinuity, it affects my domain, right? That's why we have to do it before reducing, because the only two things that are going to affect your domain are the holes and the vertical asymptotes. That's it. So we have to take both of those into account. If we reduce this and this goes away and we don't see it, then our domain is not going to be correct. So I'm going to write down our the official way to write the domain, and then I'll tell you the little shortened way we could actually write it. So for the domain, what we would write, because we're not going to put, we could put it in, um, Interval notation, but we'd have to link a bunch of little intervals together, so this actually makes it a little easier. We have a squiggly bracket, with, and we put an x with a vertical line. So that means x, set of all x's, such that, then we have an x again, a little kind of, it looks kind of like a chopped off c, like that, with a line right here, so it looks like a weird e. That means is an element of, so it is kind of representing an e. So where x is an element of the real numbers, then x cannot equal plus or minus 2. So it's the set of all x's such that x is an element of the real numbers and x cannot equal positive or negative 2. So that's still kind of a lot to write. It is a little bit better than the interval notation stuff. But because we're only working in the real numbers, we're going to leave this part out um, just because everything is going to be in the real numbers, so we just kind of know that. 
And then the way you would really write the domain, or that I'm going to let you, is that set of all x is such that x cannot equal plus or minus 2. And that'll be a little simpler than linking a bunch of intervals together, especially if there's more than that for the discontinuity. Okay. Everybody good so far? All right. So let's look at number two. On number two, there's nothing to factor. There's nothing to reduce. Um, so it, it is what it is. My domain is going to be the set of all x's such that x cannot equal what? Negative 11. And that's it, because I have a vertical asymptote there, and that's the only thing that is affecting my domain. We, go, we okay with that? Do you have a question, Gabriel? Sure. All right, y'all do number three. Can't equal plus or minus 5. You agree with that? Okay. Any questions? Awesome. All right, so let's talk about the x-intercepts. All right. So I still, and the x-intercepts, that happens after reducing, so I have to factor and try and reduce. So if I factor this, I'm going to get x plus 2 over, and this will be x plus 4. 4x minus 2. Okay, so the, do I have anything I can simplify? Okay, so it's like either after reducing or after trying to reduce at least. So my zeros then, the zeros of the function, or it says x-intercepts. Dang it, I thought it said zeros is what I want. X-intercepts would mean everything's in ordered pairs, but the zeros are what we're going to look at for the other stuff. So um, the, uh, it said zeros on the front, didn't it? Yeah, okay. Didn't even agree with myself, apparently. Um, so the, uh, oh, lost my train of thought. The zeros of the function come from the zeros of the numerator or denominator? The numerator, right? So your x is then, it's just a set of values, and it comes from that, it would be negative 2. That's it. You have one x-intercept, one zero. What's, what's the question? Because the zeros of the denominator give you the vertical asymptotes. Oh. Okay, it gives you, they, yeah, they give you different things. Okay. All right, so let's look at number two. We're going to factor this. So this will give me x minus 5, x plus 4 over x plus 4 times x minus 4. All right, so can I reduce this one? Yes. So even though we're only asked for the zeros, because we have we can figure it out anyway, we're going to go ahead and write down our point discontinuity. So our point discontinuity, what would the x value be of that? Negative 4, okay? And so then these are going to cancel out. My reduced function is x minus 5 over x minus 4. How do I figure out the y value of my whole? I substitute negative 4 into the reduced one, right? So it's going to be negative 4 minus 5 over negative 4 minus 4. So it's going to give me negative 9 over negative 8, so it's 9 over 8. So remember, like, this, these kind of go together. It's like this is what it looks like with a hole here, but I'm actually looking for the zeros. So my zeros, they'll only have one, and it is 5. If you do it before you reduce, you would include the negative 4, but that doesn't make sense because it's not even going to be in your domain. Okay. What questions you got? You good? All right. So number three. There's nothing to factor. There's nothing to reduce. There's not even any variables in the numerator. So do I have any zeros? No. no. Okay. So this is a couple of different ways you can write it. 
x equals this. That is that me. That is the empty set. There's more than one way to write an empty set. That's one way, but that's the way you can do it in delta math. It's literally just an empty set. There's nothing to put in there. So we can write it this way, or we can write it this way. So if you write your zeros with lines through them, they don't mean zero. It means empty set, and those are two completely different things. But what you can't do, but it's not this. You do one or the other, you don't do both. That's an empty set of an empty set. All right, it's a little redundant. All right, y'all do number four. Negative two and four. Yes. Awesome. Any questions at all? All right. Y intercepts. We've been finding y intercepts for a long, long time, but again, it has to happen after you reduce. So if I look at number one, there is nothing to reduce. Um, so all I want to find then is f of zero. So when I substitute in zero, these just zero out. You just end up with negative three over 11. So your y-intercept, it's an ordered pair since it says intercept, right? Is the zero come first or second? First, because the zero is for x, right? Zero, negative three elements. Hopefully that should be a piece of cake. All right, so on number two. We're going to factor, and we're going to get x plus 3 times x minus 3 over x plus 3. Can I reduce this one? Yes, I can. So that means I'm going to have point discontinuity when x is negative 3. So those cancel out. My reduced function is x minus 3. So what's the y value here? Negative 6, good. And then for my y-intercept, it's going to be 0 what? Y'all crack me up when I pause on this. This is the equation of a line. You've been graphing y equals mx plus b for like a million years now. What's the y-intercept? Negative 3. Plus you just substitute in 0, it's negative 3. There you go. What questions you got? Okay, so then on number three, um, nothing to reduce, nothing like that. So I just need to find g of zero. That would give me one over zero squared. And what does that give me? Undefined, right? Because friends don't let friends divide by zero. So it's undefined, which means I don't have one because it's not going to cross the y-axis. So my y-intercept, the answer is just none. Where's my vertical asymptotes on this? At x equals zero. So since I have an asymptote there, that is the y-axis, and I can't cross it. That's why I don't have a y-intercept. Okay. All right, you do number four. Okay, so is the numerator going to factor? No. Okay, so if the numerator doesn't factor, does it even matter if the denominator does? No, it really doesn't. So I can't factor it, um, which means I won't be able to reduce it, and that's okay. Um, I am going to ask you a question that's actually not part of this yet, but do I have a horizontal asymptote here? I do. Because this is this top heavy, bottom heavy, or tied in degree? Yeah. Tied in degree. So my horizontal asymptote is at y equals what? 
one because it's the ratio of the leading coefficients, okay? I know that's not what this question was asking, but I wanted to throw that in there. All right, so what I really need is g of zero. So when I do that, I don't even have to write stuff down because it's going to zero out every term that has an x in it. So I'm just left with 11 over negative 4. So my y-intercept is at 0, negative 11 fourths. And that's it. Okay. What questions you got? Anything? We're all good? Awesome.